Okay, here at your contents page, guys, standard things have been highlighted. Scope is something you must go look at. I've now highlighted a new paragraph specific to related parties, which discusses the nature of related party transactions and relationships, so that you can see now why we believe them to be a higher risk. And then we've got the requirements. And I've just highlighted here identification paragraph. So this is the things you would do to try and identify related party transactions. And then the responding paragraph, which would be what you would do to audit the related party transactions. Okay, so let's look at the nature. So many related party transactions are in the normal course of business, so they transact with their holding company who is a supplier of the goods that they need, very similarly to the way they transact to another supplier who's not related. So they operate within the normal course of business and they don't have a very high risk then because you expect it to be at arm's length. However, there are some relationships and transactions that give rise to higher risks and that is where there is a complex relationship or complex structure within the group which could then make the transactions between the two parties very complex. The information systems are ineffective which then could result in misstatements in the balances and transactions because the information system is all about how they go about recording their balances and transactions. Or if they are not under normal market terms and conditions. So they are not at arm's length. Okay, then moving down, I just want you to have a look at the actual definition of related parties in this auditing standard. It says where there is control or significant influence over a reporting entity or they're under common control. Common key management, owners or close family members, or common controlling ownership. So everything we've already just as noted as from IFRS with regards to what could be considered related is addressed here in addition. Okay, so paragraph 13. The auditor shall inquire of management regarding the identity of related party transactions. So they need to, number one, go and inquire about whether there are any related party transactions. Okay? Then I've also made a note they should inquire with other people. And I've highlighted A15 to help us to see who those other people should be. So if we go to A15, it says the others could be those charged with governance, personnel who record the transactions that are related parties, internal audits, in-house legal, or chief ethics officer, if they have one. So that's my first set of procedures done, inquiring. Secondly, I should go and see if they have any authorization and approval of transactions that are with related parties. So I can then go and inspect the minutes for related party transactions or relationships that have been authorized. Because that will help me to identify additional related party transactions. In addition to that, I can also remain alert for potential related party transactions. And I've highlighted A22 to A23. So let's have a look at that. I could then go and look at third party confirmations, bank or legal confirmations, Income tax returns, information given to regulatory authorities who are questioning the business structure, shareholder registers, 
management records, contracts with key management, contracts outside of the ordinary course of business. We've just seen now how those strange transactions could indicate related party transactions. So go look for strange transactions. Life insurance. Invoices from professional advisors who could be considered related parties. Significant contracts renegotiated during the year. Internal audit reports. Anything that was filed with the securities regulator. Okay, so I summarized additional procedures we could have done to try and identify. Here is a complete list of them. Okay, and then it says we can also here look at bank and legal confirmations, minutes of shareholders, meetings, and any other records that could assist. So guys, huge amounts of ways we can go and identify. But just think back to your roots. What is a related party transaction? It's a, con a transaction or a relationship between somebody who has influence within the business, whether it be control or key management or significant influence in terms of holding co substantial amounts of shares that don't indicate control or joint control. So share registers are great, contracts with management are great, minutes of meetings authorizing transactions and relationships are great, tax records, Renegotiated contracts, all of these are the really common ways we can go about identifying related party transactions. Okay, then another thing just to have a look here, paragraph A25, which is dealing with significant transactions outside the entity's normal course of business. So just so you can see how you can go about finding them. You're looking for complex transactions, offshore transactions, contracts where you can't understand the rationale for it, leasing for no consideration, large discounts, transactions with circular arrangements. Okay, and then all those other examples that I've given you in the slides. So that's how we can go about identifying them. Once we've identified them, we need to then be able to respond to the risks. So develop our order procedures. And I've highlighted A31 to A34. And that's because we've got some examples of procedures like confirming the transaction with any intermediaries who may have been involved in the transaction, confirming it with the related party itself and then looking at the related party's financial records to actually see that. Or potentially you could say looking or, in, or confirming with the related party auditors, if you aren't actually the auditors of the related party as well. Okay, further to that, we can do inquiries with management, inquiries with the related party, looking at the contracts. Now you're going to be testing for the accuracy, the cutoff, and the classification when you are looking at the contracts. So get into the detail to make sure it's recorded correctly. Background searches could help you. And there's another example, reviewing whistleblowing reports. Okay, and then finally, what do you do if you identify related party transactions that weren't disclosed? Okay, so what do you have to do? You're going to have to discuss that with, first with the audit team so that they are aware of it, and then you're going to have to communicate it with management. So request management to go and identify all others. Then I need to go and audit the actual 
transactions that have now come back to us from management. And I've highlighted A36. So making inquiries with the parties, related parties, or any other party that could have been involved, legal counsels, and so on. Testing the accounting records and the transactions, and finally seeing that it has been disclosed subsequently. Okay, so ultimately redoing the procedures we've just done to test that it was recorded correctly because they previously didn't identify it or disclose it. Okay, we then have to consider if there are any other related parties that exist that haven't been disclosed. And then E, if there's non-disclosure, so we've identified this, they haven't gone and disclosed it after we've become aware that there is this transaction, we have to consider what that means for the implications of the audit. So ultimately, there is a misstatement now. And so this would then need to be included in our evaluation. of misstatements. Okay, and that's why I've said we're leaving the evaluation of misstatements right to the end because here we can see already if there is a misstatement that we identify with related parties, we have to go include it in that misstatement evaluation. Okay, that's all I want to go into with regards to the standard. So next, I want you guys to attempt this class question. Class example one, guys, let's refer to the class example document. Guys, it's out of eight. So I'm going to give you two minutes reading time and 12 minutes writing time. <laughs> 